And now, in studio, bringing his Midwest values from the show me state to the land of San Diego. He's a triple threat, licensed as an attorney, mortgage broker, and a top producing realtor who's crushing the competition. Here to deliver you what's happening in the trenches of the market, your host, Michael Gaddis. Good evening, San Diego. Welcome to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis. I am a top producing real estate broker, a licensed California attorney specializing in helping distressed homeowners, and an NMLS licensed mortgage broker. I truly am San Diego's real real estate expert. I am here every Wednesday at 8 p.m. to discuss anything and everything related to San Diego real estate. I welcome any questions or issues that you would like to hear from me on the show. There are several ways that you could contact me. First, you could call me at 888-242-2272. That's 888-242-2272. You can also email me at michael at michaelgaddis.com. That's michael at michaelgaddis.com. Or you can visit my website at www.michaelgaddis.com. Or you can follow me on Twitter at MGJD Realty. Finally, you can visit my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Michael Gaddis Realty Group. I'd like to start the show today by talking a little bit about uh, what I did last night. Last night, I went to a, a Chamber of Commerce event. Um, I went to the San Diego Coastal Chamber of Commerce. Uh, last night, they had a Wine, Food, and Business Expo at the Morgan Run Resort Club Morgan Run Resort Club and Resort in Rancho Santa Fe. And let, it, let me tell you I had a really really good time there. I I met a lot of people um and met a lot of new businesses. Uh, there's a couple of them I'd like to really kind of call out that uh, really kind of impressed me the most. The first one of the first places I went was to a place called uh, uh, uh our table a booth from somebody called Bliss and Baker Baking Company. And they had Rice Krispie treats on their desk there. They were giving samples away, and I, I tried one. And, you know, I've had a lot of Rice Krispie treats in my day. And I thought, you know, Rice Krispie treats pretty much taste the same. They do not taste the same. The, the Rice Krispie treat that I got from Bliss and Baker Baking Company was incredible. I literally just stood there just with it melting in my mouth. And there were just so many different flavors that I did not expect from a Rice Krispie treat. I mean, it was really, really amazing. So, I mean, they specialize in doing gift baskets and things like that and party favors for uh, weddings and such. And I highly recommend that you try their Rice Krispie treats because I'm telling you, it kind of blew my socks off. Uh, you, can, you can visit them. Their, their website is www.blissandbaker.com. That's www.blissandbaker.com. And the email address, if you want to contact him, is lovebliss_and_baker at gmail.com. That's lovebliss_and_baker at gmail.com. I also visited Andrew Nudson, who is the executive chef at the Hilton in Del Mar. And he gave me some ahi tartar that was just out of sight as well. I mean, there was a, I tried a lot of things there. I tried a lot of different food. They had different types of food and, and wine and beverages there. And when I tried the ahi tartar, I just kind of like my eyes just, I just kind of gazed straight. And he, he saw me and he must have known that it was, it was a, you know, I was impacted by it. And we kind of laughed about it because it was the most amazing ahi tartar that I have ever had. And so I, I also like, you know, I also recommend anybody who is interested in uh, having some really, really good food, go on to the, go to the Hilton and Del Mar. Uh, it's located at 15575 Jimmy Durandy Boulevard in Del Mar, California, 92014. That's 15575 Jimmy Durandy Boulevard, Del Mar, California, 92014. And as I said, as for Andrew Nudson, I'm telling you that ahi tartar was, was just incredible. And the last person I'd like to talk, uh, to kind of mention to you guys that I, I saw last night was a tax attorney named Michael Fultz Wexler. Uh, he's a certified specialist in tax law, and he's a brilliant man. We had a long conversation last night about a myriad of topics, you know, some related to law, some not. But uh, he specializes in estate planning and tax law. He does a lot of uh, stuff related to um, nonprofit organizations as well. 
Uh, he is really a brilliant man. So if you're in the market for somebody who is doing estate planning or tax law, you should really call Michael Wexler here. His office is located at 12526 High Bluff Drive in San Diego, California, and his phone number is 858-792-3540. That's 858-792-3540. And as I said, I, I had a long conversation with him and, and uh, about as a, just a, a ton of different topics. And he is a really, really bright man. So I want to talk a little bit now about some new communities. Last week, I mentioned Cornerstone Communities in Carlsbad, their new development, Old Creek Trails. However, last week, I told you it was off of El Camino Real, and it is not. Uh, I did a little slip there, so I want to correct that. It's actually uh, located south of the 76 and west of College. I drove by it the other day, and you know all the earth movers are there, and everything's uh, moving earth around, getting ready for this new giant development that they're going to be putting in on 60 acres of land. Also being built by Cornerstone Communities in, in, in Oceanside, in the Rancho de Oro area, is the Pacific Ridge community. I drove by that as well. That one's going to be really interesting because it sits on top of a hill there, and it looks like some of the edge properties might even have some ocean views there. I don't think any of the actual building has taken place there, but it's the land looks like it's been graded. But uh, they haven't put any streets or anything in, but I'm sure they're going to start building it very soon. I also want to do another call out to the Toll Brothers at Robertson Ranch Development in Carlsbad, which is a stone's throw from my office. That's the 672 new home development that's going to be uh, built here real soon. You know, they're in the process of built, putting in streets and sewers, things like that. Toll Brothers builds really nice houses. I, I, I really uh, think that they're a high quality builder. And so if you're interested in a Toll Brothers house, you should call my office. As I said, I'm really, really close to, to that particular community. Um, and lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Lennar's Casero in Carlsbad. That's the 26th new home development. That's pretty close to the Toll Brothers uh, development. Uh, actually, you could it literally, when I say stones throw, you might be able to throw a stone there. I mean, uh, you'd probably have to, you know, maybe be a professional baseball player, but you might get that stone there. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a nice development as well. Uh, it's a smaller development, only 26 homes. Uh, also, it's, it's high quality, uh, you know, high, it's a high quality builder. Uh, their homes are a little interesting because they have kind of a floor plan based on multifamilies. And the way they have it set up is kind of interesting. So if you're looking to buy a home and maybe you're going to have your in-laws or somebody like that living with you, that is a home, I mean, a development you might want to look into. And that's Lennar. Uh, Lennar is a development in Carlsbad. It's called Casero. The one thing I want to say about all of these is if you are looking for new homes, get representation. You know, I know we've talked about this before, but... You know, when you're dealing with a builder, I mean, a, a lot of times the builders say, oh, you don't need a real estate professional to, to represent you. But I'll tell you, a lot of times there's a lot of things that come into effect later on or halfway through the transaction that you need some guidance. You need your own champion to kind of just you know, to, to throw things off. If you can't trust their representatives as representing you 100% and giving you the best advice. And there's a lot of scenarios that come up. I mean, in my legal practice, I get a lot of people calling me, you know, halfway through going, well, you know, the builder's trying to do this, or is it right if the builder does this, or can they do that, or I'm having trouble with my loan, but my contingency period's up, and the builder's pressing me, what do I do? All of these questions could probably be addressed if you had adequate real estate pro uh, professional, and preferably someone like me that really understands new home developments and, and developers and law. So I want to kind of talk, jump over really quick. I want to talk about a couple listings that I have. Um, the first one I want to talk about is located in Carmel Valley. I've talked about it last week and I want to talk about it again. It's located at 4251 Pylon Point in Carmel Valley. Um, this one is uh, currently uh, on the market for 979000 It's a four bedroom, three full bath uh, home and it has 2,533 square feet. And a couple of things that really make uh, uh, this house stand up, stand out, is when you're comparing buying this house to say a new house, one of the things you need to keep in mind is this particular house has no homeowners association and no Melarus. So the price is what it is. So even if you, 
even if you have to pay a little bit more in this house versus, say, a new house, and, and as we talked about before, buying new houses is a little bit complicated because, you know, you have the, all the add-ons that they put on there, plus you have to develop your backyard. But assuming that this house, even with all of that, is a little bit higher, in the end, your monthly payments will probably end up coming out a lot less because it has no mellow roos. No mellow roos. So this house is a great deal. Plus, it's also a good deal for people who have elderly parents or people that are living with them. Um, so, because it has a downstairs bedroom and it has a bathroom uh, located uh, downstairs adjoining it, uh, it and it uh, it's it's a great deal. And I think that anybody who's looking for a house in Carmel Valley should really go by four two five one Pylon Point. Uh, the next uh, house I wanted to talk a little bit about is located in Alpine, and I again I've spoken about this one before. It's seven zero seven Camino Scarpita in Alpine. It is a four-bedroom, three-bath home with 3,227 square feet. This home is priced with a range listing of 669 to 689. This one is a short sale. Uh, this one, I'm going to tell you, this one is really, really special. If you're looking to live in Alpine, this one has magnificent views. I mean, this is an incredible lot. And this was custom built by the... Um, uh, by the uh, by, the homeowners, they put a lot of love and and uh, their own thoughts into the design of it, and you can see that especially in the backyard as horseshoe pits, bo bocce courts, you know, an outdoor kitchen. I mean, it is a really special place, especially if you like views and to entertain. So if you're if you're thinking about moving to Alpine, I strongly suggest you take a look at this, and you could contact my office if you're interested in either one of these two listings. So up next. So you want to sell your house. What's the best way to choose a real estate agent to help you? Find out after the break. You're listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. This is AM 1170, The Answer. Craig Sewing here, host of The Craig Sewing Show. I want you to think in your head for a minute. How much money did you make last year? Here, here's a better question. How much money did you keep in other words, how much of your harder money was for you rather than giving it away to this inefficient government of ours? If you think the government's inefficient, I got a challenge for you. I'm going to challenge your efficiency with your tax plan. My good friend Doug Jennings, who you hear on KCBQ all the time, is a savant when it comes to tax planning. As Doug puts it, Craig, I've never even seen a tax return I can't improve. Doug can help you keep more of your money, help you improve your structure for your taxes, your business, your real estate, even your marriage. Why wouldn't you take a moment to get a free consultation? can save you thousands, maybe tens of thousands of dollars. He's not really a friend of the IRS, but I'm a consumer advocate. I want him helping you. This is something you got to do. Visit JenningsTaxLaw.com for a free consultation on your tax plan. That's JenningsTaxLaw.com. You can thank me later. Doug is a great person, a great professional. He and his wife, Peggy, are friends of mine. I give him my highest recommendation, JenningsTaxLaw.com. Dot com. Visit him today. Hey, Craig Sewing here, consumer activist. You hear me every day at 6 p.m. on KCBQ. My goal is to help you win in any marketplace. One of the things that applies to every single person that listens to our show and that's listening right now, you have a credit score, and more likely than not, it has inaccuracies on it. Nobody seems to understand how these things work. Here's what I can tell you. I have a credit expert that's a partner in the show named Aran Sinai. I call him the credit magician. If you've ever had any issues with your credit, you want to get your scores up, maybe a foreclosure, bankruptcy, or maybe just a collection. You know the city of San Diego can send parking tickets to collections? Crazy. Well, bad credit's a choice. Reach out to Aran Sinai. How do you do that? You go to our website, AmericanDreamElite.com. AmericanDreamElite.com. Hit me up on the contact form. I'll connect you with Iran. AmericanDreamElite.com. If you've ever had any credit issues whatsoever, AmericanDreamElite.com. Hi, this is AJ Gupta from the Gupta Legal Center. You've probably seen us on the American Dream TV show and the Craig Sewing Radio Show. We're honored to be featured as the exclusive real estate attorney and honored to be trusted by Craig and all of his top producing realtors. Our office was also featured as a super lawyer representing California's top 5% of attorneys. You may not know whether you need an attorney or not. My suggestion is you kind of have an idea whether there's a problem or a question. So I suggest if you don't know whether you need an attorney or not, give us a call. We'd be happy to pick up the phone 
give you a call back, figure out what it is that you need to have addressed. If we can't or don't know the issue, then we can definitely point you in the right direction. Our phone number is 619-866-3444. That's 619-866-3444. And that's guptalc.com. G-U-P-T-A-L-C.com. Welcome back to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am Michael Gaddis of www.michaelgaddis.com. And although I am a top producing realtor in San Diego County, I cannot possibly represent every single person in the county. So with that being said, how do you choose a real estate agent? How do you go about that process? Well, there's some things to take into consideration when looking to uh, secure a real a real estate professional to help you sell your house. So we're going to go through some things here today. Uh, you know, some little bits and pieces that uh, might give you some advice on on how you should go about choosing those uh, professionals. My number one point I would tell homeowners, and this is a hard point for them, but I'm telling you, this is probably my number one point: stay away from family and friends. Once you say that you want to sell your house, every relative and every friend and every acquaintance that you know is going to come out of the woodwork like ants during you know the time when it's really hot. They'll just infiltrate everywhere. Aunt Jean, who you haven't heard from in three years, will call you. Hey, heard you're selling your house. You know, Bob from the gym will come over after you know after getting off the pec deck and say, "Hey, I heard you're selling your house." So the key to this is keep business as business and keep family and friends as family and friends. When you get money involved, it changes things. I cannot tell you how many times I get calls again in my legal practice from somebody that says they're having a dispute with their agent, and it used to be my best friend or she was my cousin, or she's my wife's you know, sister. I mean, it, it happens all the time. Because when money gets involved, it, it really kind of clouds people's judgment, when it, especially when there's a familial relationship there. So I would say, number one, and I know it's hard to do because everyone says, well, I trust my friend or I trust my, you know, my relative. You know what? As I said, keep business as business. Um, that is the most, one of the most important things you need to do. Um, number two, um, I would look at the educational background at the, at the, um, of the real estate professionals that you're, you're looking at not, you know, in, in the, you don't necessarily, the real, or real estate agents don't necessarily need to have, you know, degrees in order to become real estate professionals. But I would say that if it were me, I'm looking at some, I want somebody who to represent the, the house is the, is the most important asset that most people own. It's the most expensive asset. It's our investment. And, you know, if I'm looking to sell my property, I want to make sure that the person that I'm uh, entrusting to sell it, you know, has the educational background to be able to handle it. I mean, selling a house is not just about marketing. Yeah, there, everyone has to market. All of us need to know how to market. We all need to know how to sell your house for top dollar. You're going to hear that like 5,000 times. I'm the best realtor, or I'm sorry, I'm the best real estate professional. You know, I have, I sell your house for top dollar. I'll sell it for the most. I've sold it for, you know, I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm that. You hear that all the time. And, you know, everyone can't be at the top. I'll tell you that. But everyone says they're at the top. So I think that one thing you need to do to try to, you know, separate, uh, you know, these people is to, you know, look at their educational background and eliminate some people based upon, you know, what their what their kind of educational background is. And, you know, I think the other thing is, is you need to interview at least two, if not three uh, real estate professionals. You really need to get a, a kind of a, a different uh, approach or a different pitch from each of them, so that you could kind of see, you know, what each of them brings to the table. Because every real estate professional is not the same. We're not all created equally. We have different avenues of of, of marketing plans. We have different backgrounds. We have different personalities. And you need to really kind of do yourself a justice. And just because your neighbor said, hey, my real, my real estate professional is the best, use him, doesn't necessarily mean you need to go and use that person. It means you can use that, you can interview that person as one of your candidates. But I really think you need to treat it as a kind of an interview process so that you can ask people questions uh, and, and see which one is the best fit for you. Um, there are a lot of uh, re uh, real estate professionals out there 
like myself that are also attorneys. There's an advantage to having people who are, you know, that are real estate professionals that have an attorney background because obviously the legal nature of of real estate is intense. I mean, I don't know if any of you have ever seen a, a real estate file at the end of a transaction, but I'm here in, in the studio right now, and I'm putting my hands like way apart. I mean, it's huge. They're like they're like dictionaries, and so I think that you know when you start getting into a lot of the legalese and 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 you know what does this mean and what does that mean? I mean, you're it's really hard for somebody who doesn't have a formal legal education to really kind of be advising you on those types of things. So. You know, there are, believe it or not, you know, a few of us out there that are all, that are both real estate professionals and attorneys. So I would really kind of just kind of look and see if you can maybe have one of those come in for one of your three that you're going to interview just to see what they bring to the table. I mean, differentiate between them. Uh, another thing is perform your due diligence. You know, look through the, you know, look through the Internet, uh, look at websites, you know, look the Better Business Bureau, LinkedIn, Yelp. You know the California Department of Real Estate website, you know, but really do your due diligence on people because that's another thing I hear is, well, if I would have known that about him, I never would have used him. And you know, I think that you know, if you do your proper amount of due diligence, that it will really go a long way to helping you select the right person. At least it will help you eliminate somebody because if you go and do some research and you find some bad reviews, or you go to the website and see that he had been previously disciplined for this or that, it might help you say, well, you know, if I you know, if there's three of them, I can at least eliminate two. Another thing is personality. You really need to try to pick somebody that is a straight shooter. I mean, you, you don't want a snake oil salesman. And that there's a lot of that in the real estate industry. There's a lot of people who try to sell themselves above and beyond what their ability is. And they're very good at selling themselves. It's just they don't have the ability to really back up what they're telling you they're going to do. There's a lot of egos in the real estate profession. A lot of egos. Very overly inflated egos. So what you need to do is kind of sift through that because what you're looking for is the best partner to, and guide to help you through the process. And what you don't want to do is get somebody who's just an overly inflated, you know, giant walking ego that's not going to work well with you or other agents when it comes time to trying to secure your, uh, you know, an offer for your house. So, you know, really, uh, and also be careful of people who are promising and guaranteeing things. I hear on the radio and and I hear on uh, TV all these different types of, you know, guarantees, you know, if I don't sell your house in 30 days, I'll buy your house and all kinds of different stuff. And you know, I'm not into gimmicks myself and and I I don't think that I would sell my house uh, under the premise of, you know, people using what I call circus tactics to lure them in. I think that, you know, that uh, most homeowners are above those types of things. And it just seems like a desperate act to try to get as many people to call them as possible by promising just absurdly crazy stuff that just seems right. But, you know, when it comes down to it, there's always a catch. There's always fine print to those types of things. So, you know, I would try to stay away from people who have these gimmicks uh, that seem just outrageously too good to be true. The next thing is, is you know, when you interview your three um, real estate professionals, I think that you know you need to take a kind of. A, I know a, a lot of people like to go towards big giant real estate companies, but I think at least one of the people that you're interviewing should be from maybe a smaller brokerage or a, a boutique brokerage. And I'll tell you why: you shouldn't in immediately eliminate a real estate professional just because he's with one of these big companies. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the broker the um, real estate professionals out there have branched off from the big companies and started their own brokers. So a lot of them maybe used to work at these big companies, and big companies are just like that. They're just you know kind of machines, and there's not a lot to it other than you know. They're just pushing an agenda. A lot of times, your service level is going to be higher uh, with smaller brokers and bro and boutique brokerages. So don't necessarily disqualify somebody because he doesn't work at one of the big boys. I think you'd be missing out on a on a big opportunity uh, to do that. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, don't be afraid to negotiate commissions. And oh boy, every real estate professional out there just shook in their seat when I said that. But look, the industry standard is 6%. But that doesn't mean that you sh if someone shows up there with a listing agreement, 
with 6% that you have to sign it. And that goes back to another thing. You know, beware of the people who show up at your house with the high pressure, I'm not leaving this house until you sign this listing agreement. Um, if that's the case, I strongly suggest you just show them the door because selling a house is not like buying a car. I mean, buying a used car. It's not like you have to sit in that office and talk about true coat and they're trying to sell you and make you sign on that dotted line. Um, I think that basically what you need to do is is really um, negotiate the commission. Don't go. Don't sub subject yourself to high pressure. And you know, if someone's going to get six percent, make them explain to you why they're going to get six percent. I mean, you know, you can negotiate as low as five percent, but say, okay, if I'm going to give you six uh, percent, what are you going to do for me? And I'm not saying you shouldn't give them six percent because I'm telling you, people can earn six percent. There's a lot that goes into marketing a house. There's a lot that goes into it. And, and the more you pay your, your real estate professional to market and work for you, the harder he's probably going to work. So, But make him, make him explain to you why you should give him a six versus a five. Make him sit down there and explain that. Because after we come back from the break, we're going to talk about the most effective ways to market your property, which will, which will really explain why I'm tell, uh, telling you what I'm telling you here. So... Um, after the break, we're going to come back and talk about the most effective ways to market your property. You are listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. Look no further. We have The Answer. AM 1170, The Answer. Hey, San Diego, Craig Sewing here. Look, one of the things that nobody likes to hear is that they got bugs in their home. Almost all California homes have some sort of bug or termite problem. It's not a cool thing to have bugs running around your house, so I'm going to help you get rid of them. I want you to connect with Lloyd's Pest Control. These are our good friends at the Craig Sewing Show. They can help you. They've been in business putting bugs out of business since 1931. They'll do a free inspection for you. If you want to get your biggest investment checked out, make sure there's not bugs or termites, go to LloydPest.com. That's LloydPest.com. Dot com and get a free inspection of your real estate today. Going through divorce can be very stressful. It is important to know your rights. I'm attorney Ilona Antonian. I'm a certified family law specialist. For over a decade, I've been helping San Diegans win their divorce and custody cases. If you have questions about divorce, property division, child or spousal support, modification of orders, or find yourself in a custody battle, please call us at 619-696-1100. Find us online at expertdivorcelaw.com where you can download our free divorce mediation and recovery guides that I hope you find useful. Welcome back to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of www.michaelgaddis.com. I am a top producing real estate uh, uh, agent uh, located in uh, Carlsbad, California. And although I, I do service all of San Diego County, my primary focus is in the communities uh, as far south as La Jolla, all the way up to Oceanside, and as far east as Fallbrook. So... Before the break, we were discussing how to select a real estate agent and at least give some tips on what you should kind of be considering when, when interviewing real estate professionals. But now we need to talk about a little bit about how to market your home. What's the strategy? What's the plan? And that should be something that you ask your real estate professional during the interview process. What is your plan? How are you going to sell my house? You should try to see if what kind of tactics they're going to use. Now, there are old school real estate professionals and kind of more new new type of real estate professionals. Uh, old school real estate professionals rely a lot on some of the old tactics that used to work, um, you know, such as you know newspaper ads, magazines, you know, things like that. Maybe some you know relying really heavy just on open houses. However, you know, th you know the internet has changed a lot of things. It's not just changed. You know how you know the buyer's ability to search for houses. It's also changed the seller's ability to market their houses. So whenever it comes time for me to do a listing presentation, one of the things I like to bring with me is a report from the National Association of Realtors. It's called the Home Buyer and Seller Generational Trends Report from 2015. Now, one of the things this talks about is just where buyers are coming from, how they're looking, what's, you know, what's going on in their minds. 
So I'm a real statistical type person. I like to take data. I like to extrapolate data from different sources, and I like to try to read and interpret it. I guess it goes back to my days in law school when I had to research so much, but I research lots of things. And one of the things that I, uh, I found out is that you, know, that you have to change with the times. Your marketing tactics cannot remain static. If you remain static, you're going to become a dinosaur. So I use the data found in this generational report, generational trends report, and I use it to help guide my marketing plan. So the, one of the things I look at is the first step taken during the home buying process. So when I look at the statistics, it says that 43% of all buyers looked online for properties for sale. That's the first step they took, 43%. They looked online. Uh, the second, and, he, and he, this, you might find this very interesting. Do you know what percentage contacted a real estate agent as their very first step? 15%. Only 15% of buyers contacted a real estate agent as their first step. So that tells you that, you know, you should put it, be putting a lot of emphasis on the internet. You know, number three, just so you know, looked online for information about the home buying process. So if you add that, which is 12%, so you add that 12% to the 43% for that looked online for properties, 55% of all buyers, their first step was somewhat internet related. So, I mean, I, I, and I really think that, you know, that you really need to, to make sure that whoever's coming to your house to present a marketing plan, you know, is, is up with the times and understands where these buyers are coming from. Uh, it's interesting because if you go down the line, you can see uh, drove by homes in neighborhood, only 6%. Visited open houses is their first step, 3%. Yeah, that's right, 3%. Uh, looked up information about neighborhoods or areas, 3%. Uh, contacted a builder or visitor builder models, only 2% did that. And then how about this one? Looked in newspapers, magazines, or home buying guides. Guess what percent that was? 1% of buyers. Just 1% looked to those magazines and, and those newspapers. So if somebody's coming to your house and they said, yes, I'm going to put your house in this magazine or I'm going to do this, you already know only 1% of buyers are basically starting their search there. Now, what's interesting is if you look at where buyers ended up finding the home that they purchased, what resource was their home that they ended up purchasing? Where did it come from? Well, 43% of all buyers say the internet is where they eventually found their home. So 43% is the is an internet. A real estate agent was 33%. A yard sign or an open house sign was 9%. A friend, relative, or neighbor was 6%. A home builder or their agent was 5%. Directly from seller or they knew the sellers was 3%. Print newspaper advertisement was 1%. And we go back here to Home Book or Magazine. And this is where it gets startling. It, there's a little asterisk here. And the asterisk says less than 1%. So less than 1% of all buyers, according to this report, found their, the home that they eventually purchased in a home book or magazine. So I know what happens, especially with a lot of you people who have luxury listings out there, maybe a million dollars and above. You know, you come in and the listing agent, the your uh, real estate agent you're interviewing says, "I'm going to put your house in this magazine. I'm going to do this." They're using all of that basically as a tool to help get you to sign. It's not, according to these statistics, helping them sell your house. So any resources they're using to put it into a magazine is probably more to try to attract more people to them than it is to attract buyers to your house, at least according to these reports. So I would look beyond that. So here's, what, here, here's the most important piece of information that I show people when I go on my listing presentations. You know, what information sources were used by home buyers in their home search? Well, if you look at, uh, on, according to this, Online websites were used by 88% of all buyers. That's 88% of anyone looking for a house looked online as one of their resources. Now, what's interesting is because this report breaks it down even by age brackets. So 
even the 69 to 89 year old bracket, the 69 to 89 year old bracket, the percentage was 65%. 65% of all people between the ages of 69 to 89 used the internet as one of their resources. So that is really amazing because a lot of times people say, oh, well, you know, the older generations, they're just not in touch with the digital or internet world. Well, these statistics are stating otherwise. I think everyone is coming around and realizing the benefits of, of, of uh, utilizing the internet in their home search. Now, if you go down, the next was real estate agent. 87% utilized a real estate agent. Uh, and then it goes down to mobile or tablet website or application, 50%. A yard sign, 48%. Open houses, 44%. Online video site, 26%. A home builder, 18%. Here we go with print and newspaper advertisement at 21%. Home book or magazine, 14%. Only 14% of the people you even looked at a magazine or a home book. And as we could tell from the previous statistics, less than 1% actually found the house they eventually purchased in that book. Then you have billboard at 4%, television at 4%, and relocation company at 3%. So what does that tell us, you know, as real estate professionals and as home sellers, what do we need to do according to these statistics to really attract, you know, our uh, buyers to our properties? And a lot of what goes down to it is you have to understand the psychology of a buyer. What are buyers looking for? How do they think? You know, how are we going to get to them and how are we going to drive them to our house? That's what we need. We need to figure out how we're going to drive those buyers to our property. And I think it depends a lot on, on, on what type of home you have. But I mean, in general, you have to look at these statistics and then kind of analyze. And what you have to do is think, okay, this is my type of property. Let's say you're looking at a two acre property in, in Bonzel, which is located between Oceanside and Fallbrook. Let's say you're looking at that. Well, that's a very unique property. And so what you should probably do is just kind of like what I mentioned in one of my previous shows. If you are going to uh, you know, sell your house, one of the things I always recommend is our first strategy. The first thing we want to do is we want to visit our competition and act like buyers. If we are, we, so what we do is we pull up every house within a certain you know, ra geographic radius of your house and basically, what we do is we just go visit them and ask them, you know, just to treat it like as, as if we were going to buy a house. That really allows us to see what other what buyers are seeing. So it makes us look at look at our house more objectively. So we can compare the the tributes that this house has versus our house, and that's a really really important thing to do. But once you do that, you have to have an, uh, a, a real estate professional that understands social media and, and the internet, because that is the wave of the future, marketing to people via social media and the internet. Now, how do you do that? Well, that takes a lot of, of, of you know, kind of knowledge and experience. It just, it's not, for example, if you take, let's say, SEO, which is called search engine optimization, is how you can kind of uh, write an article or put something on the internet and you try to get like Google or one of the web browsers to pick it up. So if you take, for example, the, the search words, million dollar homes, San Diego, if you, if you Google that right now, if you're in front of your computer, you Google million dollar homes, San Diego. When you look, you're going to see ads on the top, ads on the side, and then you're going to see stuff in the middle. The top and the sides are paid. The middle is called organic. That means it's the Google, the search engine is, is generating it just by its normal algorithms. Now, if you Google that, those keywords, you're going to see my website coming up number two, right behind Dream Home Magazine San Diego for that keyword search. That takes a lot of skill to be able to do. I don't pay for that. That comes up organically it because it's because I know how to do search engine optimization. So when you're looking for a real estate professional, you really need to, to, uh, to, to take into consideration what kind of uh, experience and knowledge do they have related to the internet? Because as all these statistics have told us, that's where buyers are looking. And we need to put your house where buyers are looking. So after the break, we're going to visit the world of reverse mortgages. You are listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. AM 
1170 The Answer and am1170theanswer.com. What if you could safely grow your retirement account with a reasonable rate of return with no risk of principal? Hi, this is Dave Harris with Wealth Preservation, specializing in retirement income and insurance planning. There's nothing I enjoy more than helping San Diegans protect and grow their retirement savings. For over four decades, we have helped families achieve financial success. If you need help with your retirement planning, please visit me online or call me today. My number is 800-313-PLAN or visit me online at wealthpreservationllc.com. Hey, Craig Sewing here. Look, I get asked all the time from CraigSewing.com, who is my CPA? I got to tell you, this guy is the savant of tax planning. He's not just a CPA that does all the paperwork. He will actually help you coordinate a full-blown tax plan and asset protection. I have never referred anybody to Doug Jennings that was not able to reduce their taxes. Not once. And I've never heard anything negative. I give my highest recommendation to Doug Jennings of JenningsTaxLaw.com. You've got to reach out to him. A free consultation and you'll see you might be able to cut your tax liability in half. Ethically, legally, it just takes a plan. Doug Jennings, JenningsTaxLaw.com. Reach out to him today, JenningsTaxLaw.com. Your home should be a place that you love coming to. Hi, I'm Nikki Klug, interior designer, and there is nothing I enjoy more than helping San Diegans live in homes that they fall madly in love with. I've helped hundreds of homeowners experience a sense of luxury, rejuvenation, and inspiration in their everyday lives. If you need help creating a home that you love, please visit me online at NikkiKlugDesign.com or call me at 619-948-7173. Welcome back to The Michael Gaddis Show. I am your host, Michael Gaddis of www.michaelgaddis.com. I am also the CEO and NMLS licensed broker for Frontier Loan Group, Inc., or as we like to call it, FLG. FLG is licensed by the California Bureau of Real Estate, license number 01449152, NMLS ID number 345305. I am also licensed by the California Bureau of Real Estate as a real estate broker. My broker license is 01433800, and my NMLS license ID is 280011. Today, I want to talk about reverse mortgages. And I know, as I, as I defined it last week, it's one of the most enigmatic loan products on the market today. When it comes to reverse mortgages, the thing I tell my clients is not to be afraid to ask questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question. I know that's a cliche, but it is true. There is no such thing as a stupid question. And I also tell them if you don't understand the answer that I give or whoever gives you, then you need to keep asking the same question again and again. You need to really understand what you're getting into. And when it comes down to it, reverse mortgages are not nearly as complicated as they seem. But I still think everyone should have a full understanding of everything that you know of the of the, how it works from A to Z. So if that takes you know one hour, great. If it takes five days, so be it. If it takes two months, so be it. You have to really understand what you're getting into. Do your research before you know whether it's the right solution for you. So what is a reverse mortgage? Well, a reverse mortgage simply it's just a, it's a type of uh, loan available to homeowners over the age of 62 that have either paid off their home or amassed a considerable amount of equity. Reverse mortgages are available through FHA's Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program. That's in short for HECM, H E C M, Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program. You know, HECM enables homeowners to either withdraw payments from the equity of their home or receive a single disbursement lump sum payment. So, what, how does that work? Well, what it really is, is basically it's a negative amortization loan. So, a normal mortgage works, a, mor- a normal mortgage requires a homeowner to make monthly payments over a set of years. That's called an amortization period. So, you know, a normal, like a 30 year fixed, is a 30 year amortization period. So, that's the amount of time you have to pay back the principal balance. In a reverse mortgage, you don't you receive a uh, a loan that does not have to be paid directly from you. Where does it get paid? It gets paid from your principal balance, basically. So instead of you having to come up with that money every single month, 
basically whatever payment you should have made gets added onto your principal. Now that some, that proposition scares a lot of people, um, but I, I'll tell you, for some of those homeowners out there who are on fixed incomes, and we're talking about some retirees who have Social Security, uh, maybe a small pension, and they're they're surviving. They're surviving in a house that's almost paid off or paid off, but they're not living a quality of life. And as, as I say at FLG, your golden years should be golden. They really should. I mean, that's when you're supposed to be enjoying life the most. You don't have to work anymore. You're retired. And it is a shame what I see a lot. I mean, I see a lot of homeowners that come to me and tell me, you know, Michael, I, I can afford to make my pay my bills, but I can't even afford to go out and have a nice dinner. I can't afford to drive and see my grandchildren because I'm, my budget is so tight. And a lot of these homeowners, they're too proud to tell their children that they're suffering so much. They don't want to tell them you know, that they're so financially strapped because either one, it's either pride, you know, they're the parents and, you know, they don't want, you know, don't want to burden anybody and, and, you know, burden their children with this. And, or two, it's because, you know, basically just like I said, they don't want to, to have their children kind of supplement their, their living expenses. And, and so, you know, that's where it comes down to it's, you got a homeowner who's, you know, barely making ends meet that is living but they're not living. And that's what a reverse mortgage uh, can do for somebody. It can change their way of life because let's say, for example, they're making a $1,500 a month housing payment, principal and interest payment. Well, with a reverse mortgage, they can eliminate that payment. And in some instances, they can get cash back either on a monthly or a lump sum type payment to help give them money to help survive. That's a huge swing. You go from making a $1,500 a month payment to making no payment and to get a monthly allowance every single month, all paid from the proceeds uh, from your from your mortgage. That's why it's called a reverse mortgage. It pays you instead of you paying someone. So there are several different types of reverse mortgages. Um, and you know there's Heckams and and some instances there's Jumbos. Um, but I think what we'll jump to is we'll talk a little bit more about what kind of options there are, because a lot of, this is where a lot of the confusion comes in. It's like, well, what are my options? What do I do? Well, there's different types. They have what's called a 10 year, uh, reverse mortgage program. And this one is available to people who have adjustable interest rates, reverse mortgages. Okay. Now there is a difference between, there's two types. You can either get a fixed interest rate reverse mortgage or an adjustable interest rate reverse mortgage. So, but the the plans available are different for each. In fact, the more flexibility is with the adjustable interest rate mortgages. And I don't think anyone should be like, you know, I know there's a lot of fear with the word adjustable, but I, I don't think that that should necessarily, you know, preclude them from looking at the, you know, the potential benefits of the adjustable interest rate. And there are, there are a couple in here that I like a lot, which is the 10 year program, which is um, basically the borrower will receive monthly. E, uh, receive equal monthly payments for as long as at least one borrower lives and continues to occupy in the property as a principal residence. So basically what that means is you no longer have to make your house payment and you start getting a payment every single month for as long as you live in the property or are alive. Another uh, type of program available to the adjustable interest rate programs is the term. Now the borrower will receive equal monthly payments for a fixed period of months. Now, my, that's not one of my favorite options. I'm not a big because that option terminates. So after a fixed period of time, and then you won't receive that money anymore. So between the tenure and the term, you know, my, I would lean more towards the tenure. You know, I'd rather have the security of knowing I'm going to have a payment for as long as I live there rather than knowing I'm going to have a payment for a fixed period of time. Now, it's obviously going to affect the amount of your monthly payment. Um, it just depends, you know, on there's a lot of factors that determine one, if you can qualify for these particular programs, but two, how much you would get it. There's a, there's a, a myriad of factors that go in. Uh, and the purpose of this is just to kind of give you some general information. So the next is you can have a line of credit. 
and the borrower has the option to receive unscheduled payments or installments determined by the borrower until the line of credit is exhausted. So you can have basically a line of credit established. So if you are no longer making payments and you don't want to use any of the rest of your money, there's a certain amount of money that's set there and you can tap into it whenever you need it. So let's say you have some you know, unforeseen um, medical bills or you know, some expenses like that, then you can tap into that. And then they have a mod- what's called a modified tenure and a modified term, which is a combination of a line of credit and a monthly payment program, depending on whether it's a tenure or term. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, for the fixed rate interest rates, the borrower will receive a single disbursement lump sum plan. So that's the disadvantage of the fixed, is that you only get one single disbursement. You get all the money up front. And there's, there's limits on that. So... Um, so let's go to what are the qualifications for a reverse mortgage? Well, in order to qualify for a HECM reverse mortgage, the borrower must one, be 62 years of age or older, two, own the property outright or have a very low loan to value, which means they have to have a lot of equity in their house, um, occupy the property as their primary residence. That is, uh, that's very important. So you cannot move out of the house and have your kids move in. It, it doesn't work like that. You have to be the person that's living in the house. You cannot be delinquent on any federal debt. And you must be able to continue making payments on ancillary property charges, such as property taxes, insurance, HOA fees, Melarus, et cetera. So basically what it, that means is, a lot of times people in the past thought that the property tax insurance payment was going to be gone with the reverse mortgage, and that's not true. And that got a lot of people into some trouble. So it's really important to remember that you have to continue making your ancillary property charges, such as the property taxes, insurance, HOA. Now, the new, uh, the new rules for reverse mortgages require a financial assessment to determine that you have the ability to, to continue to make those. So that's a really nice little provision they put in there, because a lot of people were being put in this, and then they weren't able to make their property tax or they thought it was being made. So it's, it's another way to, to kind of uh, fix that. And that lastly, you, uh, people who want a reverse mortgage must complete a consumer education counseling by a HUD-approved HECM counselor. That's a third party that has to go through and kind of make sure you fully understand. And as I've told you in previous programs, I like that. I like the fact that there's a third party there, that there's someone that, you, that, a, that a borrower can re- re- uh, go to and make sure that what they're being told is correct. I like that a lot. So that is the requirement. So those are your requirements for how to get a reverse mortgage. So, well, that does it for today. I want to thank you all for listening to the Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. I am here every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. discussing anything and everything related to real estate. If you want to contact me with questions or topics for the show, please feel free to email me at michael at michaelgaddis.com. Contact me at Twitter at MJ, MGJD Realty. Or call me at 888-242-2272. That's 888-242-2272. And you can visit my Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Michael Gaddis Realty Group. Or visit my webpage at www.michaelgaddis.com. Again, you have been listening to The Michael Gaddis Show on AM 1170, The Answer. Good night, San Diego. Good night, San Diego.